Welcome to Enter America, New Mexico, the place where we look at questions of wonder from the perspective of philosophy and theology, faith and reason. I'm your host, Daniel Kelly. And one thing we do on this channel a lot is look at wonders of the culture, right? Um, that the whole uh, where we get the title from is a Vatican document uh, from the Second Vatican Council dealing with all these many wonders that we find ourselves in the midst of in modern culture, especially in modern media and entertainment. And today I wanted to talk about, I recently saw the new film by uh, Miyazaki, the made by Studio Ghibli, The Boy and the Heron. And it's a, uh, I recently saw it at the theater and I really enjoyed it and wanted to share some thoughts on it. So first of all, like all Studio Ghibli movies, it's obviously not from a Christian perspective. The background is he's Japanese, he's uh, a pagan in the sense of not Judeo-Christian. He has, you know, so there's a lot of uh, Shintoism, uh, and you know, the whole Japanese cultural milieu where there's uh, a heavy dose of Buddhist philosophy, heavy dose of Shintoist uh, mythology and all that good stuff mixed up uh, into it. Uh, and I don't think that that needs to be a difficulty for, uh, you know, Christian viewers, just like uh, Christians uh, can still read the Iliad and the Odyssey, even though it's very, very pagan. And I'll, I'll come back to that a little bit. Uh, so my initial thoughts on this movie, I'm not going to give any uh, really uh, heavy spoilers. There might be little, little, very light spoilers. So if you want to keep yourself totally, totally unspoiled, uh, go watch something else. The one thing I like about it, but also I think it would be difficult for a Christian viewer that I, I wanted to talk about, is it's very, um, very much mythology. It's uh, the poetry of life in video form, not the prose, right? So Tolkien described how uh, mythology and fairy stories and stuff are from this big melting pot of humanity. It's like this big stew and you scoop out different things. And definitely uh, in Christian Western culture, uh, our fairy tales have been mediated through Christian lens. So they're not necessarily as grim as they originally are. Although if you read the original Grimm's fairy tales, they're pretty difficult for modern sensibilities. Well, this is just straight pure fairy tale mythology. Uh, given to you that humanity. So there's a lot of, uh, conf and it's poetry, there's a lot of confusing things, a lot of stuff that a Christian that's trying to, uh, or any Westerner really, that's just trying to make everything hyper rational. It's not like that. It's like the older myths. And uh, are there some parts that you're going to have to say, hmm, I don't think that's really makes sense. Yeah, there's some parts like, like that, just like if you're going to read the Iliad or the Odyssey, this Greek, Greek mythology, you're going to, as a Christian, going to have to be like, hmm, that part's, you know, not really good. That's a dumb part. As a Western viewer, there's parts that if you're not already um, immersed in kind of a Japanese culture that are going to be kind of, oh, that's weird. Uh, and even if you are, you're going to be, you might be like, oh, that's weird. Uh, so that's uh, one warning I'd say about this movie that uh, I unless you're familiar with anime, with Japanese culture, you might be a little bit put off by some things. It doesn't have, so when I say anime, 99% uh, of anime Christians shouldn't watch because it's full of sexual perversion and, but this does not uh, have any of that. But I really wanted to talk about some of the themes that stood out uh, to me. Uh, and I might have missed some of the stuff because I was, well, I did have uh, my uh, children with me and it, sometimes it's hard to keep track of everything when you've got little ones uh, there but it's surprisingly my two-year-old actually really uh, enjoyed this movie uh, and I think that a uh, kid could watch it but some of the themes that stood out to me that I really really enjoyed so if you move past all the oh this is kind of confusing it's uh the Japanese mythology, it's kind of poetry, not prose. Uh, it's not uh, really hyper-rationalistic, like we're uh, used to having our stories very more clearly ordered. It's more poetically ordered, but there's some themes emerge I like because it's just from the heart of humanity, not mediated by Western culture or Christianity. And uh, some of the things I liked in that, some of the themes that stood out, was actually surprisingly, uh, one of the first ones was the, it deals very well with the theme of death. Uh, so uh, 
the main character, the boy's mother, and this isn't a big spoiler because if it happens in the first five minutes of the story, it's not a spoiler. So the boy, it's about this boy who his mom dies in a fire right away. So it deals with these themes of grief, uh, adjusting uh, to new uh, situations. His dad gets remarried um, in the story. And so it's dealing with all these, I think, very, very well. This, uh, you, you're this young, you see this young man, and he's dealing with huge, very difficult changes. It's set in World War II. Doesn't really matter for the story very much. It matters a little bit. But of course, most stuff that's happening is magical things. So World War II doesn't really come into it very much. Uh, but I like how it deals with the theme of death, and it actually shows forth that if we're not living in a post Christian, hyper-rationalistic society, like we are, that the communion of saints is just a natural part of us all being connected and and not being like the fool says in his heart, as wisdom says, uh, total destruction and annihilation. It shows forth that humanity has an instinct that our, uh, those who have gone before us can still help us. And it shows it so well. I love that part. Uh, that's one of the big themes of it. And it's very clear that our love for one another doesn't just end at the grave. Um, and I love that. I think from a Christian standpoint, you can really see the communion of saints in this um, movie very well. Another thing that I think it showed is that sometimes we think, uh, sometimes it's presented as, and this is, when you have an adopted son or daughter or stepson or daughter, uh, that it we present it in stories and stuff as if it's very rewarding, and it is. But this showcases very well that it's not just easy. You have to fight for what you believe in and for your family and you have to work at it. And even if you really, really want it and to have these relationships with uh, your stepchildren or your adopted children or, you know, irregular situations like that, uh, that it doesn't just magic. Like sometimes I feel in Western media, we sometimes, uh, stuff is too easy and too, oh, magically it all works out. Because we do want to showcase, okay, this is a difficult situation, but it's actually, it's better anyway. But this, one of the main themes of this story is that you have to work at these relationships and there's no guaranteed good outcome for it. You set your eyes on what you want and then you have to work. That's the main theme of this story. And I love that. I think it's a really, really good. And the last um, thing theme that I found in this story that I really liked um, is that it, this awareness of original sin. There's no other way to put it because if you're not living in a post-Christian society like we are, it's just obvious to the normal human. Uh, if you look at any ancient culture, um, and this story shows that very much, that human beings have an original flaw in us. We're sinful beings, even if it doesn't use that language. And so there's this theme of a person trying to create a utopia, but since it's coming from him and his heart, um, it's going to have the difficulties that are present in the human heart. But he wants it to just be good. And so he's trying to find these different um, avenues where he could make it completely pure. And one of the things that's showcased in this movie that I like so, so much is it presents that nothing that comes from humanity can uh, be completely pure. It showcases pride and original sin so well. So those are just uh, some of my initial thoughts. I've only seen this movie once uh, in theaters. I really enjoyed it. Um, I recommend it to people who are open to just enjoying the art form for what it is, which is not coming from a Western perspective. Not, it's very, very different than our culture. But if you just open yourself to what it is and not look for what it isn't, because there's definitely plenty of rough edges and stuff from our Western point of view that we would look at and be like, oh, I don't care for that. I would highly um, recommend that to somebody who can do that, somebody who isn't off put by anime uh, or these uh, different cultures stuff. If it, 
So if you know that, nah, I don't really like anime, or nah, I don't really like, uh, I, it's hard, uh, these fairy tales and stuff, uh, it's uh, stuff that's too poetic and stuff, I don't, that's not my cup of tea, okay, uh, you can skip this one, but uh, other than that, I really enjoyed this movie, I'm looking forward to watching it again, and I recommend it. So I hope that was helpful to you, you have a good day, and God bless.